Right here in paradise with the likes of Okiwan Kenobi sitting right here on my lap giving me the highest of spiritual advice and shit like that, man. This guy's got it down, man, because he's such a righteous little hound, man. A love dog if ever there was one, and I'll tell you what, I watch him do it. He's a healing dog, too. Now, that don't mean... That he walks right at your ankles, etc. No, no, no. He's a little more rascally than that. Let him get away with it, too. Now, I say a healing dog. I mean, one through with whom the healing love can flow. He's really warm. And he can always sense when you need a little love and when he needs a little love. You know, there's hardly a soul can pass him on the sidewalk, you know, especially of the feminine variety. And not reach down and give him a little love and give a little love because he is a healing dog. And you walk away feeling a bit refresh and next thing you know that cancer went away and you know little dog he's just out to play he's chasing butterflies today you see what i mean jelly bean life is so cool man and so is the little dog too and i don't mean to build him up too much but he does help pull back that curtain now don't he man see you know you get to see beyond this 3d beyond the bullshit reality and all the holographic fire and flame that goes with it oh, <laughs> oh i'm so afraid i'm so afraid but I'm not when my dog's here, man. He not only, you know, looks out for me in a, a spiritual way. He's got keen senses in the three day, you know, combined with that mystical aspect of being a yogi dog. Well, hey, you know, I let him lead the way. <laughs> you show me where to go, little doggy. And that's where we'll go because we're in the flow along with Dorothy and Toto. And, you know, I, I mean, I hate to say it because Dorothy was awful young, but she was a whiskey drinking woman. Who? She was a wild thing, man. But, you know, most of them little spoiled kid superstars are, you know. I mean, get them on drugs early, man. Come on. Let, you know, we'll flame them out and show everybody how incredibly hard it is to be a star. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, baby, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Because, because we're numb as all get out, we need to find some feeling, man. And I hear the wizard's got a little bit of that out there. 9,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountain skies, a place called spring quick flowing through this guy this old man grandpa and his little okiwan kenobi too dog is our co-pilot man you know and that don't mean we fly upside down either man we show you how to fly right side up while feeling upside down and loving all aspects of the reality around man in other words you see beyond the 3d and you realize you got eyes that see into all of the intelligence of the universe the vast nature of its universal thought that forms and creates everything, man. Yeah. Now that's a flight we're taking right here inside, man. Me and little Oki, you and your little Toki, and Dorothy and Toto too, man. Because we don't leave nobody out, man. Even though they may be so-called gone and on the other side. You know better, man. If you think about it, man. Now, you know, I've lost some real good friends here in this 3D. I know what it is to grieve. I'm not putting nobody down for it. I understand. But see, that's the aspect of 3D that's the biggest bunch of bullshit, too. They ain't gone. They're right there with you. They're putting their little body in the ground or doing whatever you do with it, you know. It's like, wow, man. Life does not go away. We're just insensitive to it, you know. So then we feel the separation. Because you know why? Because we felt like the first time somebody died here that we had separated from our whole reality, you know. Because we used to, live, used to have a pretty coochie coochie life here you know it wasn't exactly as we see it here in the 3d but it was the earth's reality man we lived in it in some higher places too man I'm, you know i've described a lot of it before i won't bore you with the details of it but you remember it in your own heart you feel this flow coming to you through this old guy don't you know and my little doggy toto you know shit job yeah, pulling that curtain back because if you can remember with you know uh, some of our earlier beginnings like I have, man, you can live them. And you know where we're going, you know, that's where we were most ideal. But, you know, the feeling was still unreal. We were just getting used to it, man, you know. So it took a bit of doing, man, before we uh, could go down. 
and bring ourselves around. We had to do it the, the full course of it. Time we called it, you know. Ooh, I remember it could be so grinding on you at times. I mean, it's so slow. Like every second was three hours, man. Nowadays, I don't even know if there's any seconds left, let alone time, man. Just, wow. I love it, man, you know, but, you know, because it's accelerating now to a point where there'll be no more time. See, we're actually, we, as you experience these moments rock and rolling here with grandpa and friends, yourself included, of course, all of them tuning in from all over the universal heart, you know, shit, man, we're getting a good start today on our freedom, ain't we, you see, becoming what we really are, becoming to see beyond that 3D, man, give it that glowing specter of reality that a holographic reality would have, man. And let it, you know, fade into the real reality. It's a crossfade like you never seen before. You little film editor, you, you're real good at it too, man. And, you know, it's a Hollywood finish right to the end now, ain't it? You know, he says with a magic little grin, ooh, baby, I tell you, this little doggy's tuned in, man. Woo, woo. Ah, I tell you, man. Because it's just, it is, it's a Hollywood ending, and it's perfect in its Hollywood way, too. Thank you, the CIA, who invented it in the first place, man. <laughs> we got to give credit where credit's due. <laughs> oh, I'm just fun with you, kids. But, yeah, here we go. The grand beginning, man. It is like, you know, it's perfect Hollywood thing because it's, oh... We're just going to, I mean, you know, the insane have taken over the world and it looks like they're just drooling for bloodshed and to, you know, create huge Armageddon's all over the freaking place and just, oh, I don't know, man, you know, it just seems so Hollywood, so dark. I mean, you know, the heroine's laying on a railroad track and the train's not 30 feet from her going 40 miles an hour. You're going to have to move quick, man. You're probably going to die, but you can get her out of there, Okay. You see, it's one of those Hollywood moments. And then all of a sudden, it all just fades away. You know, we don't even get that end. All of a sudden, we just remember where the whole movie begins. And we see all the 12 chapters of it we've lived. There have been 12 basic chapters in the whole of the reality of time. Okay, and I call it a reality very loosely, but that's how we experience it. See, when we're on this side of this 3D, when we're on this other side, we know better. But over here, you forget, man. You can't help it. You know, we're rock stars, man. You know, we uh, take too many drugs, drink, take too many pills, and drink way too much whiskey, man. If you could just settle down and just smoke a little pot every now and then, you can have a couple other vices, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? But don't. You know, indulge yourself in freaky experience anymore. Shit, what do you need that for, you know? That's empty. You know, see, that's cold. See, this is real, man. It's like a hot cup of coffee in your hand. There's nothing like it, man. Especially on a cold day when the wind's blowing out there and it's snowing and it's 40 below and you're inside of a toasty warm place where you can see all the action, but it don't take no traction in that indoors, man. You're like, that's a nice little teepee to be living in. And here's to the hot coffee that just warms you from the inside out. Well, see, Spring Creek's kind of like that here on the Hazy Radio Ooh, Network. But we do that. We warm you from the inside out in many different ways. It's a multi-dimensional, multi-level experience, you know. And it ain't a pyramid scheme. Yet it is made of a pyramidic reality that's actually spherical. You, you know, I mean, you know, you don't want to get into all the cosmic mechanics of it. Just remember what you are. You'll see it all. You'll live in it and it don't matter. Now, see, if you're, you know, walking down the street and all of a sudden in your conscious eye, you start to see presences of, you know, uh, some glowing things and some symbols and they did have kind of a strange, almost Egyptian look to them, but they're not, they're not Egyptian. It's some kind of different language, but it's just symbologies, you know? And, and, and it becomes like a glittering, glowing gateway as you, you know, continue walking down the sidewalk or, you know, sometimes you're a little bit disempowered in those moments as far as physical presence go. And you got to sit on a bench or something real quick or hopefully there's a little patch of grass there with no dog turds on it or anything, you know. <laughs> Get yourself reconnected to the earth while you're going through this experience, man. Because it's moving through the levels of, of dimensional time and learning to live outside of its expression. And these are gainings and growings in that moment of time where you start to go back to those moments in the beginning where we were truthfully divine. 
each one of us. And we still are. We never really gave that presence up. We just, you know, came through these 12 little loops inside the huger loop of time. You know, I call them chapters. You call them what you will, you know. Episode one, episode two. But, you know, the, uh, well, there have been a huge changes here many, many times. And so we're kind of like the last of the seedlings the destroyer gets to mess with, you see. After that, we just step out of the 3D. There ain't no destroyer anymore. You know, it's just that Hollywood moment, man. It all just dissolved right at the last moment. And there's Jesus, Joe, and rock and roll, and old Muhammad, and, you know, uh, that Eskimo princess, what's her name? And, you know, all the rest of them to play this great game, man, you know, of life. That's us, baby. That's truth coming around. That's when the 3D go down. And it's a perfect Hollywood ending right at the last moment, you see. We've had to reduce tensions here many times because the insanity here really runs deep, you know. And some people just can't help but love dropping bombs, you know. They're out of their freaking gourd. I'm not pointing any fingers. It's been going on for generations now. We just got much more horrible shit to mess with now than we ever had before, right? And how destructive can you be? It's like there's a hatred for humanity. They just want to kill us all, you know. Well, maybe that might be somebody's plan. I don't think it's a human being, though. Do you? I didn't think so. See, it's a Hollywood thing, man. <laughs> this is how we disempower all of that. Coming together inside. You don't have any unrighteous energy in your person. None at all. You're just like this dog here. You're purely whatever you are made to be. Whatever that is in human form, that's the norm. You, you will see. Now you live it in a little more of a unified space, a little more of a unified place. But truthfully, the rock and the roll have become one inside, right there in the center of your heart and soul. Everything begins there, man. Everything. This is why you get to see it through your third eye, you know, why you get these glittery glowing experiences and so forth, you know, transitions that you can see and experience beyond the 3D as you're living in the 3D, man, you know. See, those moments reunify worlds, bring hearts back together, resolve all the conflicting feelings we've ever inhabited, man. You know, the most tormented ones to the least bothersome, but still there kind of shit. It all goes with this flow, this medicine of heart, don't you know, as we begin to remember. The human role. Those moments of beginning what life was like for thousands of years, because we were just adjusting in to what you would now call a fleshly presence. So we had the the light body, which is the ideal combination of it all, so to speak. And what is this light body thing? Well, it has a material presence in the 3D. That's feeling. It's the water. It's the organic earth that we're made of. You see in the atmosphere around it, the, the air. See, everything is living, everything. You think the space is empty. It's, it, no way, baby. Everything is living. And life, I mean, this is what your eyes begin to see as you see beyond the division of time into 3D. So just whenever these moments come to you, just settle. And don't just settle for them, settle into them, flow through them. Do this in a loving way. But this is one of those moments right here, right now, today. And we're taking these ancient old pains, some ideas of shame, and dissolving all that shit away. Seeing the purity of intention that drove us through everything. That's the innocence. That's what got us through. That's why the heart hasn't gone down. Even though it's a really good Hollywood ending here, man. You know, And just about this time, then we start to remember our cosmic friends that do, too, live a little beyond the 3D and those nether worlds of 4 and 5 or whatever you call it. I mean, I, I don't give them numbers in my presence, you know, because you can't count them. There's just so many different levels in so many different ways. But see, as the flow of Spring Creek comes into being, you know, then the river flows outward into its creation everywhere in all directions into everything. And the river becomes that life and that life is the river and they are united in the tree of life. That's the full expression of all living things. It's called the tree of life because that's kind of the shape it's formed in, kind of. 
You know, kind of. It just, just is. You you live in it. You know what I'm talking about. You understand, man? You don't quite get there yet. Well, that's okay. You're on your way, baby. Oh, what's the matter here today? I wish people would not interrupt me when I'm on the radio. I probably should shut that thing off, don't you know? But just in case, yeah, see, that's just people that don't know. But that's all right. We're helping them get it. That's that's why they cosmically connect with me here, you know. The, you know, at just the right moment, even though I can't talk to them and stuff, you know. And it's a bit interruptive, but yet they're hard. Whoever that is, whatever that is, their heart drove them to make that call at that moment at just that right time. I need a little shifting in the gears, and they needed to touch in here in some way. So they got their little connection. They got my attention for a moment. See? See how it works, man? This is how we change the 3D, by recognizing what's happening here quite naturally, you know, the next level, and then the next level, and then the next level, see, it goes on from there, this is just the beginning, when you start to see the cosmic mystery unraveling right before your very eyes, and you understand, moments like that are all created of love, and all fulfill a divine purpose, in the oddest, the most coyote sort of way, it's not hey okay, even though it is upside down and backwards, yeah, but it's not hey okay, it's not pulling back, it's not, you know, making a pig out of itself in anything. It's just there to experience everything. And for a brief moment in what we call time. Because our presence, you know, as the spiritual giants that we are, including this dog here and all the life that lives here, not just humans, but all part of it, and it's all part of us. It is us. You see... The divine mothers of creation, as I call it. You know, you call it what you will. But see, it's like that river of life is the cosmic intelligence and the emotion to go with it. All of it. And as I say, it's been flowing in the way. Now it flows that way. It flows into everything. So we don't just collect it down to this tiny little root here in the 3D anymore. I mean, our experience becomes much more cosmic than that. Because the cosmic is the reality where all creation exists. Where even our experience here is created. And that's why the universe, all the presences here that are persons and so forth, can tune in to our experience here like a soap opera on TV, kind of, but they live it with you. They don't control it. They just experience it with you vicariously. But it's not a separate experience. They are where they are. You are where you are. The experience is unified. Though this thing you see of as you, it is making its cosmic choices beneath the level of its own awareness. It's just moved by a flow, what I call the river of life, see? That we root it down here into Mother Earth in an organic, atmospheric sort of way. You know, and now, from that little seedling, the Mother Earth and her children, comes the sprout and then the united blossoming of the central life. That's as we're doing right now, flowing out into the full presence of creation from inside of ourselves. But just taking it simply, purely, recognizing what's going on in our person first and foremost. Because the external is made of the internal. And what goes on here inside. This is why a lot of you have had to spend a lot of alone time in recent years, but especially in, I don't know. But anyway, a lot of alone time. Because it's not alone. You're uniting with your universal heart in those alone times. It's whatever you're doing, it's meditation of the heart. You know, and as you look at it now, you start to see it at that level in that different way. See, because it's a little more expansive view of what's really going on here with you as a person. With the universe tuned into you, watching every little move we make, breathing every little breath right along with it. And yeah, they cheer you on when you're you're going a good way. And they, you know, try to, oh, please don't do that. Oh, no. You know, kind of thing when you're going the other way. But that's what makes it exciting, you see. That's what makes it a soap opera. That makes, what makes it cosmic entertainment for all of life. Because, you know, they're sitting on the edges of their seats. Everyone benefits from this experience here, you know. It's that simplified and that eccentric in the universal presence that it is. I mean, in other words, it's a rare thing happening here, man. A really rare thing. A really cool one. And that's why the whole universe is tuned in. Because as the thing happens, this 
bubble bursts forward, this blossom goes out in all directions now. Well, of course, it, all live living, you know, radiates that resonating feeling, the tonal harmony of the divine universal rock up a symphony of life, man. You know, see, this is where it's all led to. This is why the hippies had to open the door in the 3D and, you know, Marilyn and Elvis before them and Hank and, and, uh, Patsy Klein back in those days, etc. You know, each one the stage, the step, express musically. So we even made a whole industry out of music, you know, where before it was just pure entertainment, you know. And you didn't, you know, if you were a musician, you couldn't expect to do too well for the longest of time, you know, but you did it because you loved it, you know, loved the reminder of what life's really made of, you know. And that kind of uncosmic 3D grounded in the root and have to bust up a tree to make some symphony, you know, <laughs> kind of thinking, you know. Oh, wow, what a day we had with that, man. Well, the real rock and roll, the real harmony of life is now coming out to play, you know. We've opened that gateway. We've, we've stepped beyond the uh, universal norm, and now we are merging with the ultimate universal norm, which is the, the reality of the mystical, man, the cosmic, the awareness of the energetic presence of a conscious person in all of life living. That conscious person is you and your little dog and kitty too. And everything that surrounds you, everything that you are, everything that will be what you are. It's all made of that. It's all made of that singular cosmic pure love that just loves to create and feel itself in creation. In unity. Unified. See, it starts right here in this rooted presence. We knew we could pull our fractured anomalies back together here. In a dreamy way, we knew we could do it, and we did it. Same way you work out a lot of your unconscious feelings in your dreaming time as you're sleeping here in the 3D. You know, some of those dreams are quite healing, quite revelatory in the way you go, even though like when you wake up in the morning, you only vaguely got a sense of them. Don't remember them too specifically at all. Well, some people do, but most don't. Not that kind of dream anyway. Yet you feel the effect of it. It's easier that day, etc. And now heads your your person in a whole new way. So as you get up in the morning, you just feel better about yourself. Just feel a little more pure, a little more awake, a little more light. These are the steps we've had to take to get ourselves to here. And it's gone through generations like that. And we agreed to it as part of our admission into this little <clears throat> amusement park we call 3D. Well, you know, we had to say, okay, you can take us any old which way you want. We know it's just entertainment, yeah, right. But once you step through that gate, you forget all that. And you're over here playing it on this side. And some of these carny people that run this joint don't play by the rules. <laughs> don't be cool <laughs> to a heart that's true. Elvis, we love you, man. Thank you for opening your share of the door, man. Thanks to all of you for being where you are. Be your own little Elvis and Marilyn, too, man, and open the doors in any which way you have. Because that's been just exactly the right thing you're doing right now, isn't it, see? That's the end, Howard. We can pat ourselves on the back for what we got through to get us here, sure. But here's like where we begin. Here's where we remember. You know, we were like formed in those days back there in those high places at the beginning before there was even time really yet there was it just didn't feel the same yet you know and when we began to formate ourselves as human beings human presences you know in these light bodies these ethereal bodies you'd call them looking at it from here where we are now but they're not they're not ethereal they're kind of like the ufos you see in the sky that can have a a full almost solid looking presence but they never quite solidify completely here even when you're getting on and off of them and all that good stuff they do you know that because they exist multi-dimensionally that's how they can travel through dimension and time and shit like that because there really is no time it's just experience you see that's the cosmic that's the outside 3d view of it it's just experience you know it's like a projected reality that we're like an audience on a big old spaceship lug somewhere and all of our third eyes and hearts are united and we're projecting through our third eye onto the screen before us the comedy of life that we're playing in as actors and actresses in the divine dream of duality 
polarization. About good and evil and light and dark. Yeah. <laughs> Etc. You know? They are learning to see beyond the nightmarish dream by living in it and fulfilling its whole scheme, man. We're 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 really pretty dang cool bunch as human being, man. This human race, man. We're not really racing anymore either. Remember, we're at the finish line, baby, where it all begins. <laughs> see, and you remember yourself in that presence, you see. Now here in the materialized 3D, you know, people have been turning up these huge skulls and stuff. Well, some of those are cousins from, you know, around the universe, of course. They didn't have their beginnings here, had them elsewhere. But some of those are uh, the ones that look humanoid. They are. It's us, you know. Not, you know, that's that's one of those beginning presences that I'm describing. When we were living in those high places, you know, we, we hardly ever die. Death was there, but we hardly ever die. And we like, we're like, and if we looked at our presence now, we'd see ourselves as something like 15 foot tall. I mean, when I first looked at it, I thought it was around 7 foot. But, you know, how do you do it? When you're experiencing it cosmically, you can't give it a measure. You know what I mean? You just see that, wow, that's tall and elegant and beautiful. Each one of us. We had the male and female form going on, but it was just transitioning into being. So it was kind of innocent and really golden, really pure. You know, there was no disharmony at all between these gender. We hadn't even genderized it yet. Yet it was a genderized thing in its outward expression. In other words, there were were what you would call women and men, but not exactly as we see our presence now. But very similar, it's a whole lot more huger in its conscious experience. You know, yet just as elegant and as live and as beautiful and as glowing as any flower of life can be. You see, and we never lost that perception. That's why the hippie kids were called flower children. There is that idea at the center of our heart. That we are the blossoming flowers of the universe. And this is our truth in every human being that lives here. Yeah, even Donald Trump, poor guy. <laughs> Anybody, all of us, you know. This is our living truth. The flower children. The children of, when we're made, just like, you know how you put fertilizer on your flowers and water and all that kind of stuff? Well, we've been kind of nurtured along like that too in a cosmic sense. We've been brought around now to the place where we can finally allow that, you know, we got a root down. That's what we got to do. That's the agony. And this is the ecstasy, which I got to tell you are the same thing. It's a unified experience, and it kind of takes the agony out of it. It just makes it ecstasy because that's the truth. You see, the only reason some people cling to their agony is it's ecstatic for their spirit to experience it that way through the soul presence in the heart. Ecstatic, ecstatically joyful, you see, but as you realize that as your higher aspect, you realize that as your truth, because the higher is the lower, and the lower is the higher, and there is no division, the polarized view is, the genderized view is uh, negated, as you experience truth, the union of heart, of all conscious presence and experience, within your life as a person united in every way it's a process that goes on from this moment forward as of today this moment right now but it's been going on forever see it's just another moment it's the fulfillment of all those moments really yet it's quiet and just another little passage you know Another little gateway, another little opening, just like he's walking down the sidewalk there and, you know, starting to see beyond the 3D and all that glittery, glowy gateway things going on. Huh? Yeah, I see. Kind of just like that same thing, only a little larger aspect of it. And it grows from here, man, you know. We got several uh, dimensions to bust through here in the next few days and weeks, and we'll be doing a lot of that here. And I hope you'll be doing a lot of that right along with us out there all across this earth, wherever you may be, you know, from the heart of me and Oki and all that unite with us here in this singular presence of expressive love that really is happy to be alive and able to experience what we have and what we do right now, you see. That's the key out of here, babies. You know, this is how we rock this world and roll it right into being what it truthfully is. 
and never live in the lies no more. And I'll never get swept up in the movie again yet. We'll keep creating it because we like playing with it that way, you know, but it won't be anything like we knew before. Just how, you know, you graduate as, your, as an actor and as a producer, director, you graduate. There are different levels of your career as you get a little older and so forth, you know. You get seasoned, you know. You also sometimes get case hardened, so then you don't give a shit. So it can go the other way, too. But essentially what we're talking about is you purify your creative expression as you grow older. We're just using the Hollywood experience as an example, more or less, because I know it's owned and controlled by the CIA, don't you? <laughs> well, if it ain't, it sure acts like it, you know. And they've sure seen a lot of UFOs there at Topanga Canyon, you know. But it seems like that's died down a lot, you know. Guys quit showing off so much, you know. And they know their day has come, you know. Judgment Day. Oh, my God, get out of the way. Ain't no judgment coming out to play, man. We just all realize the unity of heart, the singular little consciously present child we are in the mother's arms. And just let her rock us and roll us a little bit, okay? See, that's the other aspect of rock and roll you didn't know. His mother taking her little babies in her arms and rocking them and rolling them and singing them back to life, see? Wake up, my darling, my little baby. Like that, you know, shit. You got the medicine of the medicine flow now, man. Right here at Spring Creek, the headwaters of life. Only and exclusively on the Hazy Radio Network, a conscious experience in reality every day, man, as me and Opie and a whole bunch of saints and sinners come out to play. You know, I mean, we unify with all hearts at this moment of the day, and guess what? Ah, it's like that all the time when you say, yeah, since where you go from here, you just let that glow expand, don't you know? You might waver and wobble a little bit, big deal, man, you know? Everybody has their own aspect their own experience of it, you know, and what you see may not be exactly what I see at the same moment in the same day, but guess what, you know, it's all just different levels of it, different ways, different aspects, and there's a gazillion different aspects to every moment of experience here, and that's what makes it so exquisite, there's so many elements beyond the 3D being served here, you know, just through the cosmic drama we're going through. Because you got to understand, we're unique in creation. We were built for this kind of ruggedy shit. We can take it and get through it. There's hardly a form of life out there that if it wasn't unified in the heart, couldn't do it. You know, if it felt as separate as we did, couldn't do it. <clears throat> Just crunch it with that and take all creation down with it too, by the way. See, it's why we have to be careful what we think, do, and say. And let our heart come out the place we don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be careful no more, see? It just goes with the flow, and it's cosmic, and it's right, and it's rock, and it's roll, and it goes together perfectly with a divine harmony. It's the human aspect of it. And we're rooting down again. It's a whole of reality. So this cosmic feeling that we're beginning to give blossom to spreads throughout creation. So whatever you've been experiencing is hell or abomination or whatever is over with, man. You know, that cosmic shit don't exist, you know. We can just dissolve that shit away, man, because that's just Lord of the Flies, kids in the playpen, you know, getting rough with each other. I mean, and that's about as much as it means, too, so let it go now. I don't care where you've been with it or what your ancestors went through. Mine did, too. We all are. Dead ducks in the water as soon as you're born here, man. <laughs> hey, got your number, baby. That's been the way of the old 3D for a long time now. But we were sneaking it in the background, coyote way. And just like we do all the time, wherever we play, as spirit, soul, presence. See, so you're going to remember as we go through this flow, this unifying flow, who you really are. And how you really go with that flow. And what it means to you now, don't you know? Okay, there you go, Okie. Okie says long enough to do some rocking and some rolling, Grandpa. Is that medicine expanding and growing, man? He's such a bright little bean. So are you, baby. We're all coming through, man, after a long and hellacious ride. And crazier than a nutcracker on a nutcracker sweet man i'm telling you we just about fell through so many times that ice got awful thin man <laughs> but look at us now man we pulled back the curtain again 
Oh, we'll have to get America out here in just a few minutes. I don't think I got them right handy here. Hey, you guys, see if you can't find those 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 loadies from that band called America. Okay, thirty minutes. Oh, well, that's too long, man. You gotta do it quicker now. Okay, this time shit can be such a pain in the ass, man. <laughs> <laughs> I should laugh at last, didn't I? Thank goodness, man. There you go. Now you're enlightened too, baby. Just spread it around, okay? Take it happy and joyful today. And if you can't express it outwardly, just keep it inwardly. But everybody outwardly will be affected by it, of course, man. You know, that's how we work on each other, man. You know, we're cosmic, baby. Cosmic rock stars, every one of us. <laughs> we know it all. There ain't nothing getting in our way, okay? Well, when I say no at all, it's not like that arrogant thing. I just mean whatever we need in our form of experience, the divine intelligence is there helping us along the way. That's what I mean. So you can look at anything and know this story and live it anytime you want, which is what you're doing today, living the larger story now in that cosmic way. See, a little fresh drink of water here, spring crib, only and exclusively on the rock and old hazy radio network don't you know the very source of your eternal experience here man you betcha from the beginning <laughs>